So hello everyone, uh, today I want to uh, talk about a test that we're doing in the lab in microbiology. Um, it's quite common when you need to identify bacteria, especially the bacteria that are enterobacteria, bacteria you would, would find in your gut. Um, there's a huge amount of bacteria there, many of them are uh, gram positive, they're rods like E. coli, salmonella, and you can have many of uh, other bacteria. And uh, because of that, because there's, the, there's so much diversity, uh, it is important sometimes to, uh, to test, um, to test a pure culture that you would have um, isolated. So you have a, a, you know, a bunch of bacteria that you streak for isolation and uh, you identify and isolate a few uh, colonies and some of those colonies you would test to see what kind of bacteria we have in there. So besides the fact that you would, you would test them and, and uh, identify them uh, through the gram staining process, either the gram positive, gram negative, and also you can get information on the morphology of those, uh, of those cells. Are they rods, are they cocci, coccus, uh, what's the arrangement, streptococcus, staphylococcus, and all of that. But sometimes it's very, it gets very confusing because bacteria would look exactly the same. All of them are gram negative, all of them are rods. And if you don't make more observations, uh, you can be confused and you know, end up with uh, bad results, different results. So just a little, uh, just a little notice here. This this uh, tutorial is not meant to be a diagnostic, diagnostic um, tutorial uh, for medical purposes, right? It's for educational purposes, and I'm an instructor of microbiology. So uh, the, the course here is to really help my students and other students uh, be able to work with different tests. So the test we're going to look at today is a nitrate oxidation test, or sorry, nitrate reduction test, and. Uh, um, we will look, at, the reason why I brought, I bring this test is because it gives, um, depending on what we do and the chemicals we use and the observations we make in our tubes, um, it gives certain types of results and, and I've, through experience, I've noticed that sometimes students get confused, um, mostly because of the, the color change they get depending on what chemical they use and all of that. And we'll discuss a little bit of that. So um, first thing that I wanted to say is that when you're doing uh, this type of testing, and I'm sure you're familiar with that because if you're watching this video it's because you probably have, have been exposed to this experiment before, but one thing that I wanted to, to, to say is that um, most of those uh, the, the testing you'll be doing uh, and be looking at is done in a test tube and in that test tube you have another tube that's inverted and that test tube is, uh, is known as a, um, a Durham tube. And um, the reason why this tube is inverted is because when you grow bacteria in this tube, so you would have here like your normal uh, growth medium, and um, so bacteria would grow in there, and, and sometimes as they grow, uh, some bacteria produce a gas, right? And that gas is, fizzes out of the tube. But, you know, if you have a tube within a tube that's inverted like this, they call a Durham tube, then you capture that gas right here at the top of this tube. And what you can do is you can observe that tube after a while, after, you know, incubating at 37 degrees, 30 degrees for 24 to 48 hours. Then you would see that bubble and you would know, okay, a gas has been produced. Maybe it's oxygen, maybe it's nitrogen, maybe it's something else, carbon dioxide or something like that, right? Whatever test you're doing. But that's what Durham tubes are for. So they're very, very important, very useful. So, um, so uh, I just wanted to, uh, to mention this before. Now, today what we're going to look at is a nitrate reduction test. And nitrate is, um, can be used by bacteria as a final acceptor of electrons. And um, you know, in the process of producing energy, uh, sometimes bacteria can use uh, oxygen and, and uh, to produce ATP at the end. Electrons are being accepted in the respiratory chain. Uh, sometimes it's other molecules, and it can be uh, nitrate as well. And nitrate would be reduced because it accepts electrons. So uh, we would start with something like that. So what I'm going to show here is a, um, a display of the different types of reactions that can, um, can happen. Uh, when you expose bacteria to something called a nitrate broth. So what you would have in a nitrate broth, you would have uh, potassium nitrate, KNO3. So I'm going to refer now to, uh, to nitrate, that's not as potassium nitrate, but I'm just going to look at 
um, the nitrate part of that molecule. So I'm just going to refer to NO3, okay? So NO3 that we have here, it's called nitrate. Nitrate, so N-I-T-R-A-T-E. Not to be confused with its close cousin, which is nitrite, N-I-T-R-I-T-E. Very different. Nitrate, nitrite. Nitrate can be converted into nitrite when electrons are accepted. Now, for the sake of simplicity, I'm not going to add all the electrons and all the biochemical processes of this, but I just want to walk you through the, the, the whole um, process and, and tell you um, what happens should you need to identify bacteria based on a test like this. So here's what can happen. You expose certain types of bacteria to nitrate, and then you watch. You will incubate these, these, uh, these cells in a, in a tube with an inverted germ tube, and then you would uh, notice a presence of gas or not. So I'm going to look through the, uh, the different options that can happen here. There's different outcomes. When you expose bacteria to a nitrate broth, several things can happen. So one of them is that nitrite can be, uh, can be formed. You can also have the formation of ammonia. Um, sometimes the, the reactions can go even further than nitrite or ammonium, so nitrite could be converted into nitric oxide. That nitric oxide could be converted into two molecules, either nitrous oxide or nitrogen. Both of those molecules here are in the gas form. So, if you wanted to know if your bacteria does this reaction here, then you would look at what happens after. Now, a little note of caution, caution here that's important to understand is that the nitrate test, tests for one thing and one thing only. Does nitrate get converted into products past nitrite and all the other ones, okay? This is what we're looking at. We're not really looking at a conversions here. We're looking at this passage here that includes passage, that includes reaction after that. But this part here is what we are testing for, and it's important to remember that. So say that you have your Durham tube and you want to know, does my bacteria, does it uh, reduce nitrite, nitrate or not? So you would grow uh, your bacteria, like I said earlier, in a Durham tube. And in that Durham tube that I'm drawing right here, an inverted tube, if you do have a bubble, then you know there's gas has, has been produced. Those, both of those molecules here, um, nitrogen and or nitrous oxide, are in the gas form. So if you do have gas formation, as seen in, in your Durham tube, if you see that there's gas, a little bubble there, you know that for sure your bacteria converted this nitrate into this pathway here. Right? So in that case, if you do have gas formation as seen in your germ tube, you would have a positive test. Now the germ tube doesn't tell you which one of these gases has been produced, but you don't really care about that. The nitrate test, as I said, tests for this. It doesn't test for these metabolites here. You won't be able to identify that unless you have a gas chromatograph or something else, another way to test this, all right? So I'm not going to spend more time talking about that. Now, let's say that, um, let's say that you don't have gas produced, right? No gas produced, so we know that this reaction did not happen, all right? So we're not going to look at that. So now, if we don't have this and we don't have this, then we don't know what else we have. Do we have this here? Do we have ammonia? Do we have nitric, nitric oxide? Or did the reaction not go at all and then we just were stuck with nitrate in our tube? Well, we need something, uh, some kind of molecule, some, some kind of chemical reaction to help us understand what's happening here, right? And this is what we're going to do. So, let's say that um, 
in, in, let's say that I want, I, I suppose that this happened. I have good reasons to think that this, some of these reactions happen here. So what do I do, right? So what I would do is that I would, in my two, I would, I would add two reagents. And those two reagents are, and I need to, to remove this here just to make some space for this here so no gas has been produced. We know that, so we can remove that now. So in my two, what I would, I would, I would, add, I would, I would add to that too, what is sulfanilic acid, sulfanilic acid, and uh, alpha naphthalamine, naphtha laphthalamine. And the interesting thing here is that alpha naphthalamine and sulfanilic acid would react with um, our nitrite right here. Actually, it's not really with the nitrite because when nitrite is um, in solution, in aqueous solution, in water, it actually forms nitric acid, HNO2. Uh, and in this case here, um, HNO2 would react. HNO2 would react with this here, and that's going to create a, a red compound, right? So we would have in our two a color red after we're adding those two uh, chemicals here. So if we do have red after adding these two components here, sulfanilic acid and after uh, alpha naphthalamine, then we have a positive test. Why? We have a positive test because we know that these two compounds right here reacted with nitrite, or rather with nitric acid that is being formed when nitrite is present in solution. All right? So we would have a positive test here. So now let's say that we don't have a positive reaction. Well, what could happen here? Well, here's what could happen. Say that there is no nitrite in our tube. And why would there be no nitrite? Well, first thing because nitrate was never converted in the first place, right? And there's an enzyme called nitrate reductase, and that enzyme nitrate reductase is responsible for this passage here from nitrite, nitrate to nitrite. Maybe the enzyme is not present in these cells, right? In these bacteria, that happens, right? Some bacteria have it, some don't. And that's what we want to find out here. So if there's no reaction, nitrate does not react with those two compounds, then we don't have a color. And that would give us a negative test, of course. There's no reaction. But let's say that we do have ammonia or nitric oxide in our, uh, in our tube. Well, this would not give a color either because it's not, it's not nitrite. And there would be no reaction with those two compounds right here. Right? So what do we do? Well, there's a very simple solution to this. So what we would do is that we have our tube that has, right, we added to our tube, we added the two compounds, let's say compound number one, and then number two, number one is sulfanilic acid, number two is alpha naphthalamine, right? We have that in our tube, there's no color. So on top of that, what we could do is add a little bit of zinc zinc powder and be careful zinc powder can be quite reactive so you need to be careful with that so you just need to add a tiny bit what we do usually is we take a toothpick and then we take a, little, a few um, just a little bit of that powder and we add this to our tube we mix it just a tiny bit and if it does turn red okay if it does turn red then something happened what happened zinc will catalyze this reaction right here it will convert nitrate into nitrite, all right? If we have red color, it means we have nitrite, we have nitric, ox uh, nitric acid, and that reacted with those two compounds here. Now, here's what you need to remember. There was no color in the first place. We added zinc that catalyzes this reaction here from nitrate to nitrite. Now, if we have red, color red, after adding zinc powder, it means that our zinc reacted here and pushed the reaction this way. That's why we have red, which means that 
nitrate was never converted in the first place. Right? This is a confusing part. We would have a red color after adding zinc, and that red color after addition of zinc would lead to a negative result. And that's what you need to remember. That's important. Red color before adding zinc, positive. Bubble without red, you don't need to do the reaction. You have bubbles, you have gas, positive. Red color after adding zinc, that is a negative result in itself. Now, if adding zinc does not create the red color, if you don't have development of any color at all, after adding zinc, after all of that, don't be disappointed. Because what it means is that what you have in your, media, in your, um, in your tube is possibly this or this, or maybe a mix of the two, right? One and or the other, probably more, and more like this one or this one. And these two compounds do not react with, uh, with um, uh, our sulfonylic acid or uh, alpha naphthalamine. And in this case, if you add zinc, there's no color, then you do have a positive result. All right? So let's do this again. A bubble without color, you don't need to do anything else, right? You do just have your tube and your germ tube. You have, you have a little bubble there. That's positive. And if there's no color, if, if if there's no bubble, then you need to test. You add those two compounds, sulfonylic acid and after uh, alpha naphthalamine. When you add that, if there is nitric uh, ni nitrite in it, it's going to react and col and color your tube red. Positive result. Everybody is happy. Now, if there is no color at all after adding those two chemicals, then we don't have a problem yet, right? There's never a problem. It's a negative positive result. So your result is a result. It's not, it's not a good thing or a bad thing. So say that we do have, we add zinc, and zinc uh, pushes a reaction from nitrite, nitrate to nitrite, then, uh, you know, if we had red after that, it means it was always in our tube, was always in nitrate. That's why it did not react. Now we have red because it pulls a reaction to nitrite, and that's a negative result. And if I, after all of that, after adding zinc and everything, you still don't have a color at all. And in this case, it's a positive result. Everybody is happy with that. Okay? So hopefully I did not confuse you more than you might have been before. Um, but I think that's a, an important test, and it helps you identify different types of bacteria. Uh, and uh, it's quite interesting, actually. Uh, it leads to usually very, very good results. So uh, that's it. That's what I wanted to uh, tell you uh, for today. And uh, hopefully um, you'll be successful when you're performing a nitrate reduction test. Thank you.